So in this video, we're going to be talking about band structure. And uh, what is band structure? So we've been dealing with two level systems so far. So we've got some energy E2 and some energy E1. And we, we figured out what happens when you apply an electromagnetic wave to this system. And say you've got an electron occupying state E1. But now we would like to extend this. Uh, so we'd like to extend this understanding to semiconductors, which we know have not just single energy levels, but entire bands of energy levels. So they start at some uh, values EC and EV, so our conduction band and our valence band, and they're separated by the band gap. And we know there's a bunch of states. Uh, so there's a bunch of very closely separated states, both in the conduction band and in the valence band. So instead of just two energy levels, we've got an essentially infinite number of energy levels. And their density uh, is described by the density of states, which we dealt with a bunch in our uh, in intro semiconductor physics. And so now we want to know, well, what happens when I apply a photon uh, or when I send in a bunch of photons of a certain energy in a certain electromagnetic field? And this picture, so this band picture, uh, where we represent energy on the y-axis, so energy on the y-axis and space on the x-axis, is actually a little deceptive now because we might expect, so let's say that our uh, photon energy was, for example, two electron volts, and this band gap uh, was maybe, I don't know, 1.5 electron volts. And so you might expect that, uh, so I've got a bunch of electrons sitting here at the bottom of this valence band, uh, and they're just ready, uh, they're super ready to absorb a photon. And so you might imagine that, well, I can just take one of these electrons at the bottom of the valence band and they get, they absorb a photon and maybe they go up here somewhere in the conduction band. But this is actually not the case. This never happens. Uh, or this, uh, in this particular case, this is not allowed to happen. Um, and the reason is conservation of momentum. Uh, conservation of momentum. So we've largely been ignoring momentum up to this point, but actually each one of these energy levels, so each one of these energy levels in the valence band and each one of these energy levels in the conduction band also has a certain momentum, a specific momentum. And we can draw out what that momentum looks like using what's called the band structure. So the band structure. And this is just uh, a more useful for at least optoelectronics, um, a more useful way of representing the energy of a bunch of different states. So now on the y-axis, we still have energy. So this distance is still our band gap, EG. But now on the x-axis, instead of space, we have momentum, or k, uh, our wave wave number. Uh, and remember that the momentum of a particle is just Planck's constant times its wave number k. And ek diagrams are sort of the standard way of doing this. So this is our conduction band now, and this is our valence band. And let's say we're at t equals zero Kelvin, so all of our electrons are in the valence band, and we don't have any electrons in the conduction band. That just makes our lives easier. And now we've got an incoming photon. And let's say similarly that this, uh, this band gap was maybe 1.5 electron volts and this photon had an energy of two electron volts. Then if we were to try and figure out, okay, well, what happens if let's say this electron near the very top of the valence band absorbs the photon? Uh, where, would this where would this electron end up in the conduction band? Uh, and the, the answer will require us to figure out how much momentum, so how much momentum K is contributed by a photon. So how much momentum is contributed by a photon? If this uh, electron, let's say that initially it, it had a momentum or a wave, wave number of zero, then we know that its final momentum after absorbing the photon is just going to be the photon's momentum because that's just conservation of momentum the initial uh wave and sorry i'm i'm sort of using k and momentum interchangeably here and uh i i suppose we if we really want to talk about momentum let's multiply everything by h bar 
So h bar k i plus h bar of the k of the photon, so momentum of the photon, should equal our final momentum. And here we said, for example, that k initial was zero. So our final momentum should just equal our photon momentum. And we know the photon's momentum. We can, we can write out the photon's wave number. It's just 2 pi over lambda. Um, but what are the relevant dimensions uh, in this band structure? So say, what's the momentum difference from 0 to the edge of the, edge of the band diagram? And that, that maximum momentum uh, is roughly 2 pi over the crystal lattice spacing. And you can get that using uh, Nyquist's theorem, actually. Uh, you'll, you'll get 2 pi over 2a, but very similar. Um, so the maximum momentum in this band diagram divided by the photon momentum, if you work out the, the h-bars will cancel. Uh, so if you work out the math, that's just lambda over a, or the wavelength of incoming light divided by the uh, crystal lattice spacing. And a is usually on the order of a fraction of a nanometer. Uh, lambda, for most semiconductors that we'll deal with, is on the order of 500 nanometers or more. And so this ratio, lambda over A, is huge. Uh, so it's, it's much, much greater than one, and usually it's, it's going to be in the ballpark of 1,000. So that tells us that our crystal momentum uh, in this band diagram is way bigger than the photon momentum. So these transitions are basically vertical. So if, if our electron absorbs a photon, it basically just goes straight up in the band diagram because the photon contributes essentially no, no momentum. And so relative to the crystal momentum uh, or the momentum of the electrons, we say that the photon momentum is about zero or the transitions in this band structure diagram are vertical when absorbing a photon or equivalently emitting a photon. So if the band gap here was about 1.5 eV and the incoming photon was about 2 eV, then our electron, if, it, if this electron right here were to absorb uh, a photon, it would end up here uh, at about 0.5 electron volts above the band edge, near the, very, near the very center of the diagram. But there's no available state here. There's no available state. Uh, all of the available states, the places that electrons can transition to are on this curve. So they're somewhere on this parabola, this uh, or this, this band structure. Uh, this curve, this white line here, corresponds to all possible states. And you can get these curves or this band structure by actually sh solving the Schrodinger equation uh, using the crystal lattice information. We're not going to do that in, in this course, but you can derive this band structure uh, using some math. It's pretty advanced math, but it's, it's still just math. And so this electron near the band edge is actually not allowed to absorb a photon of this energy. So we actually need, uh, if we've got a photon energy of about two electron volts, for example, we actually need this electron, so say this electron over here, only this electron is allowed to transition from the valence band to the conduction band, or also uh, this electron uh, on the other side of the, well, oh, I've, I've clearly drawn this a little asymmetrically. Uh, let's say this electron, which has the same exact distance from the valence band to the conduction band, is allowed to make, make the hop. And so fundamentally, what these band diagrams are telling us now, these energy momentum or EK band diagrams, they're telling us all possible solutions or all possible states, uh, all possible pairs of momentum and energy that are allowed to exist uh, within a crystal, so within silicon. And this might seem kind of strange. So this is our conduction band, this is our valence band. This is momentum K, and this is energy E. This might seem kind of weird if you've never seen it before, but this conservation of momentum argument is what makes this representation so useful. So it's what makes it so useful. Because photon transitions always have to be vertical in this, uh, in this description, and we always have to go from one line to another line. 
So in the next video, we're going to be going over uh, how we treat this, uh, these band structures as just a bunch of two level systems. So E2 and E1, and then perform an integral to figure out the total absorption coefficient of the material. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.